Do I look too sweaty? Do I look like shit? No, you look beautiful. I hope so. right up in your face. That's fine. You get it, get up in there. Okay, guys, this next comic, a uh, very special treat. He is opening for Roseanne on April 8th and 9th at the Blue Note. All right? It's going to be a great show, and you're very lucky to see him because uh, he just, he almost died four, four weeks ago. Just like he, he almost was not with us, and now he's with us. So everybody give a big round of applause for Shane Lucas Price. <laughs> I see where your loyalties lie. You don't care that I'm alive. Literally, it's a blessing to be walking on this, I guess we can call it a stage, since it's slightly elevated, right? <laughs> I stepped off the stage. I stepped back on the stage. Uh, my name's Shane Lucas Price, and I do stand-up comedy. Uh, and I told him, this isn't, I didn't pass out because I was fat. Uh, I passed out because my heart is lazy. That's, that is why I passed out. The, so 26 beats a minute is bad. Um, you, you pass out and you almost die, and then you get an email from David Blaine saying, challenge accepted. <laughs> so, uh, I got started doing stand-up. Um, I was really bored one day at my day job, uh, Hawaii News Now, and I was like, I don't want to do this anymore, because I looked at my coworkers, and they were really, really old, and I didn't want to be stuck at a job doing the same thing over and over and over again. So I literally went online and typed in open mic, and the rest is history. Yeah, no, my heart stopped for a long time, and I passed out. And uh, yeah, I, I fucking whacked my head, and uh, I was sitting in the hospital room, and uh, the doctor comes in there and she goes, see this what you got going on with your fucking hair? Saved your life. I was like, man buns rule! Holy shit! Man bun motherfuckers! Now seriously, I don't like them, but I'm wearing them for the rest of my life because uh, it saved my life. Um, and everybody's like, where are you going to man bun? No, you fucking hipster. I know I look like a hipster, okay? I'm like ironically cupcake fat. You know? <laughs> like, I have scars from woodworking. <laughs> no. <laughs> Before I walk on stage, uh, I get really insanely nervous, but it's only because I don't want to fuck up. And uh, I feel, because I, I have this insane fear of failure. So I just start thinking of how I'm going to fuck up. <laughs> and then I go up, and then it goes away the second I walk up on stage and I say hi. It, it's gone and I'm fine. But um, that feeling on stage though, there's, there's only one thing that ever ever beat it and that was holding my son the day he was born literally that was the only thing that ever beat it that feeling what you just witnessed me doing jokes nothing compares to it i would i would give you blood i would give you my organs to be able to continue doing it so they restarted my heart that's what they had to do they had to cardiovert me they uh they, they knock you out, and I had a fun uh, anesthesiologist. She came up from behind me and goes, I snuck up behind you. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> when you do a cardio birth, they wake you up halfway through it so they can restart your heart and uh, know if you die. <laughs> so they wake you up, and you're awake, and you're like, what's going to happen? <laughs> What? <laughs> Never ever give up. If, if you're passionate about something, who cares what any, anyone thinks? It, it's, it's all, it's an interesting thing because passion is something that only you can measure. Only you know how passionate you are. People, when people see you react to something, they don't understand it. They think that you're crazy. They think that you have, you know, like, problems it's like who would who would react that way it's it's passion passion is is the reason why why um, anyone does anything I think and I would say if, if you have enough of it you should never ever ever lose that feeling and the second you do stop doing what you want to do because that means you aren't gonna give it what it deserves so if you're passionate on something I would say jump in with both feet
with this man, child, or whatever. He doesn't exist. So I stood up and pulled my pants out. I said, deuces. I won't. That's my time, everybody. Thank you. Yes. What, what was your worst show? Worst show was I opened for Country Wayne. Um, what was it, last year? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was so bad. I did so bad. I'm, so they go, you're going to do a half hour. I show up, they're like, you're going to do 10 minutes. Before the show starts, they're like, you're going to do 20 minutes. Before I went on, they go, you're going to do 12 minutes. I go, I have no idea how much time you want me to do. And then they bring me on, they pull the lights up, they turn the lights all the way on, they pull up a couch behind me while I'm, while I'm on stage, they bring up a, a full sectional couch behind me. And they have people, they seat people, they seat people on it. And then during my jokes, I'm doing a, I'm set up, and then I set up, the DJ goes, he hits a little button and goes, meow, 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 meow. Steps on every punchline. A guy in the back of the room, threatens to assassinate me. <laughs> so I go, I'm standing up here. This is going to be your worst nightmare. He goes, get the fuck off the stage. <laughs> so I did 12 minutes. They told me I was supposed to do 20. They tried not to pay me. I go, you gave me 11 different times and you turned on the lights and you told me, and now comedy. That's how you introduced me. And now comedy. It was the worst fucking set I've ever done in my life. I mean, literally, I probably got one laugh, and that was when I walked off stage. Yeah.